before Prince would release his acclaimed album Purple Rain and usher in a new form of artistry and go on to win 7 Grammys, a Golden Globe and even an Oscar. Before Prince would change his name to a symbol and have people calling him the artist formerly known as Prince. I had searched deep within my heart and spirit and I wanted to uh, uh, make a change and move to a new plateau in my life. Before Prince would take over the Super Bowl halftime show in 2007 in front of 140 million viewers. Before Dave Chappelle and Charlie Murphy would recreate a story of Prince on television. Prince had on like a, it was like a Zorro type outfit. It had the ruffles that come down in the front. He had the big perm fluffed down and all of that. Before Prince would get the ultimate payback by using Dave Chappelle's image for his album cover, Breakfast Can Wait. What am I gonna do? Sue him for using a picture of me dressed up like it was impossible? Sadly, Prince was found dead in his home on April 21st, 2016. He was 57 years young. The artist had been battling a nasty flu and he was overworked. On top of this, he also suffered from epileptic seizures throughout his youth. In his later years, he kept pretty quiet, which was in some part due to his religious regulations, being that of a Jehovah Witness for some time. But back in the 80s and the 90s, this man was on the top of every chart. He was actually the artist responsible for the warning graphics being put on albums after then Senator Al Gore caught his daughter jamming out to Prince's sexual tunes. This further added to his appeal of pushing boundaries, which in turn made him more and more mainstream, and he was given the job of making the soundtrack for the original Batman film. Just who do you? Just What's going on guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Prince prior to his passing, here for you on Before They Are Dead. Now you guys requested this video in abundance, the truth being that I was away at Playlist Live, a YouTube convention, and it's kind of hard to write and host a video when you're at a pool bar. But this news, <clears throat> it is tragic, so I needed time to get it done. Feel free to leave your condolences for the departed in the comments down below. Also let us know who to document next. Dave Chappelle, it's on its way. Prince was born Prince Rogers Nelson on June 7, 1958. In Minneapolis, Minnesota. His parents were John Nelson, a musician whose stage name was Prince Rogers, and Maddie Shaw, a jazz singer who performed with the Prince Rogers Band. Prince grew up with his full sister, Tika Nelson, and seven other half siblings. Prince was raised as Seventh day Adventist, and as a young child, well, he went by the nickname Skipper. He became interested in music at a young age and taught himself how to play the piano, the guitar, and the drums. When he was a child, he suffered from epileptic seizures, and because of that, well, he was teased relentlessly in school. And well, he was also a little weird. My mother told me one day I walked into her and said, uh, Mom, I'm not going to be sick anymore. And she said, Why? And I said, Because an angel told me so. He learned early on that he was different from his peers, and instead of trying to fit in, he decided he would be as different as possible. And he became a flashy dresser and would go on to stretch both sexual and religious norms. In high school, Prince formed a band known as Grand Central, which would later change its name to that of Champagne. A little trick he would try out years later, but we're not there just yet. Now Prince, he was the frontman of the group and he stood out as the star. It was very clear. Then at the age of 20, he found industry recognition when he was signed alone to Warner Bros Records. That same year he dropped his debut album For You and followed the next year with Prince. His material, it pushed boundaries of sexual exploration which likely led to a lot of people asking, uh, is Prince gay? But as Charlie Murphy explains, those were the times. What was wild was that the guy who looked the most like, like a bitch was getting all the women. In 1982, Prince dropped 1999. Why did he title it that? Well, this is a man who's always been ahead of his time. And this found him international success. But what really solidified him as an artist at the top of his game was his 1984 album, Purple Rain. And from that album, we got my favorite Prince song, When Doves Cry. Let's roll a clip. But Milhouse is my name. But I thought I was the only one. So this is what it feels like when doves cry. Uh, that was the wrong clip. Editors, let's try it again. was the album that resulted in Al Gore getting bent out of shape and it turns out the music industry they had to listen to his rules and regulations and from there on out well there would be warning labels on a whole lot of albums. But Prince he wasn't too upset 
because he was already starring in a movie. This was also under the title Purple Rain. Now with Prince at the top of the charts, Benny wanted to know more about the artist and wanted confirmation about his sexuality. He was in an in and off again relationship at the time with singer Susanna Melvoin and that was going on throughout the 80s. But as we learned from Charlie Murphy, Prince, he was certainly a hit with the women. From 1984 up until 2010, Prince would release an album almost each and every year. In 1985, there was Around the World in a Day. In 86, there was Parade. He followed that with Sign of the Times. And in 87, we got Love Sexy. It was in 1988, we got the album I know the most about. I'm talking about the Batman soundtrack. It actually gave me the creeps, the music, the Joker, Jack Nicholson's dance moves. But hey, I was only four. What are you going to expect? Prince was also a constant figure in pop culture, walking many a runway and gracing the covers of Billboard and Rolling Stone magazine. His longtime pals over at Warner Bros, well they knew they had picked a winner. They then signed him for a $100 million recording and publishing deal. That was in 1992. The following year, Prince became unhappy with the deal he had just signed. On top of that, he had a personal awakening, and that's when he decided to change his name to something unpronounceable. The symbol he chose is a fusion of the female and male astrological symbols, which forced everyone to refer to him as, well, whatever they could come up with. Everyone tried their best. Uh, excuse me, do you mind me asking what you're writing there, Pri I mean, uh... <laughs> It was on Valentine's Day 1996 that Prince was married for the first time to backup singer and dancer Mae Garcia. Together the pair welcomed a son who passed away just a week after its birth. Now this marriage it only lasted 3 years itself. But Prince would give marriage another go in 2001 to Manuela Testolini, but this would also end in 2006. It was during their marriage that he joined the Jehovah Witness program, a non-fundamentalist sect of Christianity that believes in heterosexual marriage and a pleasant eternal afterlife. What if you were a Jehovah's Witness that was merely pretending to be into Christmas, gathering clues and blending in to take down the holidays from within? No, Prince, he would continue to be known as the artist formerly known as Prince up until 2006. He lived for some time as a bit of a recluse from the public eye, splitting his time between his Minnesota Paisley Park compound and also living in my native Toronto. How do I know this? Well, I worked at a carpet store who had floored his entire house and he had requested purple shag throughout his entire home. Of course he did. Prince had established himself as a music great and in 2007 he rocked the world's biggest stage at the Super Bowl halftime show. Previous to this, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and later the Grammy Hall of Fame. Time Magazine also ranked him as one of the top 100 most influential people in the world. Prince would continue to drop an album almost each and every year. On top of this, he would also tour, he would mentor other artists, he would work on film projects. There's basically nothing this music genius wouldn't do. It was on April 21st, 2016 that Prince was found dead at his Paisley Park compound in Minnesota. He had collapsed in his elevator. The week prior, his plane made an emergency landing and the singer was hospitalized for what was reported as a severe case of the flu. He continued to perform after being released from the hospital, but something wasn't right and he missed two shows. Upon the announcement of his passing, tribute was paid around the world, with many sharing their love, their admiration for the artist and for his work. As for the rest of the story, well the rest of the story lives on in his music and his legacy because this is Before They Were Dead. My name is Michael McCredden and I've done a whole bunch of Before They Were Dead videos. We did David Bowie as of recent, but there's also Eze, e there's also Rob Ford, Robin Williams, there's something for everyone. Be sure to browse around, check out our other series after they're famous and uh, before they're famous. I'll see you guys in another video. And of course, leave your condolences down below. Dust for Prince. I found Prince. No, 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 fingerprints. I don't think so.